I am afraid to speak English. People will laugh at me. What if I start a conversation with a native speaker and I suddenly forget words? What if I just can't support a conversation? Like, I won't be able to use my English. I have so many fears. What should I do? Hey guys, welcome to Lingua Marina. Today we're going to talk about those questions uh, that arise in your head whenever you are uh, confronted with a situation to speak to a native speaker in English. I just want to say, like, first of all, I, I, I'm pretty sure you've heard that many times that it's just all in your head, but I know we need to kind of dig deeper and uh, talk about your fears because I had those fears. Like, even now when I speak German, because I'm a perfectionist, um, I get very nervous because I know I make mistakes and I know I forget words and I know everything like this happens and uh, my face turns red and uh, I just you know and and it actually starts happening like when I'm relaxed my German is a lot better like if I'm in an environment just talking to friends or just talking to someone at a store it would be like really smooth language when I start thinking like, oh my God, like this is one of the reasons I stopped recording videos about German, just because it's it's been declining and uh, I have those fears, but I also have them in English. But with English, I understood that English is a tool, it's an instrument that I use to improve my life. And without it, you know, I won't be able to achieve my new goals. I won't be able to get to new levels of um, whatever, YouTube, of my company's development. So today, I'm gonna start with fear number one. People are gonna laugh at me. The only time I've been laughed at uh, in terms of my English is uh, when, uh, like, laugh in real life. Like, I, I get mocked about my accent a lot on social media, but it happens because I get hundreds of thousands of views and I understand that even kittens get dislikes on YouTube and there will be people who are unhappy with whatever I'm doing and just because I'm doing it they will be posting bad comments and hating me for whatever I do. But I also understand sometimes it's actually good to have that feedback because people tell me, oh Marina that was wrong, that phrase was incorrect, but they're not laughing at me, they're telling me how to improve and I accept that with gratitude. So the only time I've been laughed at actually happened uh, when I was talking to my friend and uh, I, I, I told him I was so hooked up with this person like I wanted to say that we're really connected with a person but I used a phrasal verb to hook up with someone and it actually means have a sexual relationship and this not what it was not what I meant and another time it, it happened recently on, on Instagram I came to a butcher store and I posted a story that I missed his meat and meat in American conversational English when you say I missed his meat uh, means I missed his penis and again, people laughed at me, but I thought it was funny. Like, it's not like, and, and it was like DMs. People were oh my God, oh my God, Marina, do you know it has a second meaning? Uh, it, and it's not like they are angry at me for making that mistake. It was like, you know, a friendly advice. So I've never ever had like people in real life, like laugh at me, like say, oh my God, your English is so bad. What are you doing here? Never ever happened in my life. And I started practicing English at the age of 14. And I was hanging out with really mean, like teenagers can be really mean. And uh, they can tell really bad things in your face. But never has that ever happened to me because people understand that I'm making an effort to be understood. They understand that I come from a completely different culture and uh, that I've never spoken English to my parents or to my grandparents. So the only exception here is social media. Like if you're speaking English in social media, just be ready to get those hate comments. And even if you're perfect in English, even if you're 120 out of 120 on TOEFL and you post a video how you got that score, you would still, like if it goes viral, you would still get comments from people it's impossible, your English is not good enough, etc. Like there would always be people in social media hating you. But in real life, there's like this tiny chance it's gonna happen, but it's, it's not gonna happen, guys. Native speakers, especially Americans, especially British people, they're very friendly. In real life, uh, people who I met, people who I talked to in English, even when I was intermediate, they were really friendly and really supportive. So it's all in our heads. And uh, I think if you have this fear in English, like people would laugh at you, you probably have it in other aspects of your life. So it's just another reason for you to sit down with yourself and think about like, 
I don't have to be liked by everyone. And again, I am a person who has this feeling all the time. I want to be liked by everyone. I want it. I'm fighting this. Like once I started my channels, I realized I can't be liked by everyone, but it was really hurting me every time I read something negative about myself. And it took me a while to understand and to realize that my goal is to use my talents, is to grow as an entrepreneur, YouTuber, whatever, as a mom, and do the best that I can. What other people think about me, it's other people's business. They have their own understanding of reality. They have their own experience. Maybe they just have a bad day, but it doesn't have anything to do with me. And if you want to dig deeper in this problem, I really uh, advise you to read a book, uh, The Courage to Be Disliked. It's like one of those books that I started reading last year. I think last year I had this, I don't know, personality crisis, but I was like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I'm afraid to do this because people would comment and they would be unhappy with what I do. And I started just doing a lot of psychological research and I started doing reading a lot of books. And that was one of the books that really, really helped me. Like it just talks about how you can't control other people's emotions. You can't control what they think of you. What you have to do is focus on what you can do the best is focus on your goals and to start and achieve them. Another thing I could recommend, watch the one on Netflix. It talks just about this woman entrepreneur uh, who's a little ruthless and she's not like a role model that I want you to follow, but it just talks about like how she deals with all the problems that arise. When I was thinking like if I were at her place, I would have definitely given up, but she continued going. I really encourage you to read those books, to watch the one on Netflix and to just read interviews uh, related to this topic because this would help you in your life in general, not just with the English language. And of course, you will realize that, you know, the majority of people won't laugh at you. And if they will, it is their problem. It's not your problem. You're doing your best. You're practicing your English. You are putting effort into being understood by people who don't even speak your language and don't even make an effort to learn your language. Okay, psychology class is over. Let's move uh, to some practical advice regarding other things that you can do. Uh, so there is another fear. What if the conversation gets too complicated and uh, I won't be able to support it? I also get this fear, like for example, again, I, I can't really relate to this in English right now because my language is pretty, I would say pretty advanced to talk about all kinds of topics, but with German, I can totally relate. And when people start asking me about business, I understand that I will start a conversation. I will talk about my company, but if they start digging deeper, I will be like, oh my God, this is too complicated. And um, in 2018, I had to have a surgery in Germany and I was surprised. I was actually able to communicate with doctors and nurses about medical stuff. Because basically when we talk about English, we have 1000 words that make up 86% of the conversation. and. What you really need to know, if, if you know those 1000 words, if you go into a specific conversation, you can always ask for definitions of like specific words. So it was in Germany doing that surgery. I was like, oh, and what, what is this in German? I can say that in English or I can show you on Google. And once I learned like five or seven words that I needed that were related to that surgery, the conversation became really easy because you don't need to know like the whole, I don't know, surgery, medical, business vocabulary to support a an advanced conversation. All you need is those 1000 words. And also if you're like, oh, I don't know how many words I know right now, this doesn't actually matter. If you understand this video, that means you know enough words to support a conversation. So start practicing. And if you forget a word, if you don't know the term, if you forget a word, you can just Google it on your phone with Google Translate and show uh, your party this, this word and you will be totally fine. And this is, by the way, the way you learn this word really fast. This video is brought to you by Skillshare, a resource that I keep recommending to you guys. And they have an amazing course about self-care that I want you to explore. It is a short course. It would take around an hour to complete, but it goes through the things that we talked about in more detail. It talks about how you react to people that surround you. The course is called Revolutionary Self-Care, Embrace, Nurture and Grow Your Authentic Self. And it talks about things that we've already talked about in this video in more detail, like how to take risks, how to ask for help, how to find your authentic voice, how to be yourself instead of trying to follow other other people's guidelines instead of trying to do things that other people expect you to do just follow your gut like 
check out that course. And if it's the first time you hear about Skillshare, Skillshare is this amazing online learning community for creatives where millions of people come together to take the next step in their creative journey. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Skillshare has been created specifically for learning. That means that there are no ads and they constantly add new classes for their premium members. And it costs less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. The first 1,000 followers who hit a link below will get free trial of their premium membership. That means that you can take a course that I've recommended completely for free. Just go there and explore the power of those short classes that are really straight to the point and uh, Please take the course that I've recommended if you are experiencing those problems with like overthinking what other people think of you. Again, the link is below. The first 1000 of my subscribers get access to a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Now let's continue with the video. Another question is that what if I feel shy? What if I stop and freeze? Okay, this can happen as well if you are too nervous about the conversation. The trick that helps me a lot is to pretend that you're someone else. Because again, stopping and freezing has to do something uh, with what's going on with you internally. Like maybe you're again thinking that people are gonna laugh at you. And just there are so many thoughts in your head that you can't just process them. So imagine that you're a different person. You probably, if you're speaking to a native speaker, you're probably in a new country, nobody knows you. And once this conversation is over, you will part ways with this person. So try to pretend you're your favorite movie character. Try to pretend you're an American if you're in America. Try to pretend that you are this famous blogger that you really, really like. I don't know, try to pretend to be someone else just for this conversation it just lets your fears go and uh, it helps you become more confident when you speak what if i offend someone uh that's another fear and one thing i wanted to remember here is that when we talk to a person people pay attention to our body language to our facial expressions to our emotions and even if you say something incorrectly in english they would understand you didn't really mean it and also they would understand like if they tell you about something and you're like you don't understand but you just say yes and a lot of times people will tell you but you didn't understand right and they would explain in another way it's okay to say, oh, I didn't mean that. Sorry, was that offensive? Because my English is not good enough. It's okay. But if you're smiling, if you're open, then people will understand 100% that you didn't mean to offend them. That it was like, oh my God, I'm sorry. That is something that we're used to in our culture or I mixed up the word, people would understand. Now let's wrap up this video with a couple of tips. Uh, if you have an important conversation in English coming up, maybe you have an interview with a university, or I remember when we were preparing for Y Combinator interview, it's an accelerator here in Silicon Valley. The worst mistake that you can do is actually overthink. It makes sense to prepare. It makes sense to go through questions that were asked before in this kind of uh, environment, like go through questions that universities ask during the interview, go through questions that, uh, people are normally asked, etc. But I would say take your time, prepare for two hours, but don't take too long because when it takes too long, when it takes days, we overprepared for a Y Combinator interview. And instead of relaxing before it, instead of just catching the vibe of Silicon Valley, we were just brainstorming how we're gonna fight that small company that is trying to do the same thing. And people there didn't even know about it. And like now when I look back at it, it's important to know what you're talking about, like to tell your story, to tell, I don't know why you're interested in this or that university, this or that subject, but don't overthink. Like they would probably ask basic questions or if they ask some complicated questions, it is almost impossible to predict what they're gonna ask. So learn some basic things, but then let yourself relax. Uh, watch something in English. Just put yourself into that environment before the conversation or before the test so that your brain switches from your language into English. It will be a lot easier. The next tip, be nervous and do it anyways. Michael Jordan once said, being nervous isn't bad. It just means something important is happening. So my tip here, and uh, I did an interview with Justin Kahn on Silicon Valley Girl, and he said, don't be afraid of your emotions, don't suppress them. Tell yourself, okay, I am nervous about this conversation I'm gonna have in English. It is fine. I understand that I'm nervous because it is an important conversation. I understand that my English is maybe not good enough and I haven't practiced a lot, but I'm gonna do it anyways. And uh, I'm gonna use this conversation as practice. And after the conversation, I'm gonna sit down and think what was good and what was bad. I was really bad at like, 
analyzing things afterwards because I'm this perfectionist. And when I shoot a video, I don't wanna see it just because I understand I could have done better. And this is an endless process, but I actually taught myself to look at numbers. I taught myself to actually sit down and think what I did wrong and what could be done better. And it helps a lot with your progression. So after the conversation, sit down with yourself and think, did I do everything I could do? And if not, you know, just have some tips for yourself for the next conversation. And I have this note in my iPhone where I just put in things that I could do better in my videos. And uh, I have those tips uh, that I always look at before an important video uh, and uh, just remind myself that I make those mistakes. It is okay. It's good that I know about them and I'm gonna be better in the next video. The next tip, do it until it feels normal. Just keep having those conversations in English. Keep being shy, keep being nervous. At some stage, you're gonna be tired of it, especially if you're in an English speaking country or if you're applying to universities, like I have a lot of people here in the US who are applying in the universities, mostly children of my friends. Oh my God, I'm so old. Uh, but <laughs> they're applying to like 24 colleges at once. And to, you know, interview number 10, you just get tired of it and you just get used to it and you don't feel nervous anymore. So keep doing. Also adopt the growth mindset, something we've already talked about. Like I am bad at speaking English. My accent is not good enough yet, but I'm using this as a way to practice. And I'm using this exact conversation as my way to improve. Learn to laugh at yourself. You know, life is simple. We overcomplicate so many things. We tend to think that this meeting is game changer. It is not. You can always do another meeting. There's so many people in the world. There's so many opportunities. And if you don't get any result from the upcoming conversation, doesn't matter. You can do a lot more conversations. The most important thing is that you have yourself, you have your time, you have your brain that helps you speak English. Like don't create problems for yourself. Enjoy life. We only have one life and I want you to go ahead and enjoy it and look at everything from a positive perspective, especially if it's something like smaller, like a conversation with a native speaker. Come on, uh, it's going to be fine. Life is easy. Smile, tell yourself that if not today, you're going to make it tomorrow. If not tomorrow, you're going to make it in a week. It is fine. You'll get there. Thank you guys so much for watching this video up to the very end. Please subscribe to this channel. And if you have friends who are struggling to speak English or any other language, please share this video with them. And I'll see you very soon in my next videos. Bye-bye.